You know, um, I don't know who you are, where you came from, or what your background is, but I do know this. You matter to God. You matter to God. A and the reason that you exist is God made you to love you. He made you to love you. If he hadn't wanted to love you, you wouldn't exist. And if God were to say to you today these words, he would say, I thought you up. I formed you in your mother's womb. I have watched every day of your life, the good days, the bad days, the ups, the downs, the highs, lows, and I have never, never stopped loving you. And all of the pain that you've gone through, I have wept. The Bible says God cries. I have wept at the pains that you have gone through. And I have waited for this day and I, I want you to know me. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about a personal relationship. I made you for a friendship. You know, I am a friend of God. I have walked with him now for over 50 years. I know his voice. I know his touch. And I know that no matter what I face in the future, I'll handle it because God is with me. He's never not with me. Have you ever thought that maybe the pain you're going through right now is to get your attention? And for God to say to you, I'm standing here waiting for you, but he's a gentleman. He doesn't come into your life until you invite him in. You say, what will happen if I open my life to the love of Jesus Christ? Three things will happen in your life. Past, present, future. First, your past forgiven. Second, purpose for living. Third, a home in heaven. Past forgiven, purpose for living, home in heaven. Who else can offer that to you? Nobody. Nobody. You were made by God and you were made for God. Until you understand that, life will never make sense. The purpose of your life is not your career. The purpose of your life is not your family. The purpose of your life is not your hobbies. Those are all good things. They're all gifts of God. But what the purpose of your life is, is to let God love you and to learn to love him back. You say, what do I do? You just be honest. It really doesn't matter the words you say as much as a humble attitude that says, God, I need you. There was a guy who came to Jesus one time who had a daughter who needed to be healed. And he said, Lord, I need you to heal my daughter. And Jesus said, well, do you believe I can heal her? And he said, Lord, I, I want to believe. Help me with my unbelief. Jesus said, that's good enough. And he healed her right on the spot. I wish somebody had told me years ago that I didn't have to have all my questions answered in order to open up my life to Jesus Christ. I didn't have to have all of my excuses fulfilled and all of my reasons and rationales answered. I just had to take a simple step of faith. Lord, I want to believe. Help me with my doubts. I've walked with the Lord now all these many, many years. There's still things in this book I don't understand. And I go, wow, I don't know that I would have done it that way if I was God. Thank God I'm not God. His ways are not my ways. But I don't have to understand the chemistry of digestion to eat a steak and enjoy it. And I don't have to understand how internal combustion works to drive a car. I don't even have to understand how right now TV waves are going through the air and going right through my body. And you're seeing this but it doesn't keep me from benefiting from it. So I'm gonna ask you to make a simple step of faith right now. And that is to lay aside all the doubts and all the questions, we'll work on those. And there are legitimate answers to those. But to take a simple state, say, Lord, I wanna believe, help me with my doubt. Help me with my doubt. One night, many, many years ago, in a cabin in Northern California at a Christian camp, I was working as the lifeguard at a Christian camp. And I walked into that 
cabin at night and I got down on my knees and I prayed a simple prayer, something like this. And I said, God, if there is a God, I want to know you. And if you can give me a better life than I'm living right now, I want it. I, I want it. Yeah, I'd like to go to heaven, but I really would like a better life right now. And so as much as I know how, I open my life to you and I say, yes, yes, I'm giving you a blank check and I'm signing my name, you fill in the amount. And for the rest of my life, I will live for you and I'll love you and I'll learn to serve you because you made me, you saved me, you have a purpose for my life, you want me with you forever. The whole reason I exist is because of your love. And you know, when I prayed that simple prayer, you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't actually feel any different. No angels came down, no wings fluttered, no blinding light. My hair didn't turn white like Charlton Heston, but that was the turning point in my life. And that simple decision changed the rest of my life. It's kind of like one day I stood in front of a bunch of people and I said two words that changed my life. I said them to my wife. I said, I do. Two words, I do. When I said those two words, I had no idea what I was doing. And the rest of my life, for 45 years, I've been working out the implications of two words, I do. <laughs> it's like, that's in the fine print, and Kay will say, yeah, that's part of the I do. Oh, okay, that's in the idea, yeah, okay, then I do that too, I do too. You don't have to understand it all right now, you just have to take a little bit of faith. You say, well, I don't have any faith. Yeah, you do. When you sit down in a chair, you have faith that the chair will hold you up. You drive a car, you have a faith that you can drive. You use faith every moment of your life. It's what you put it in. So take that little faith right now, and I'm gonna lead you in a simple prayer. It's gonna change your life, not just for the rest of your life, but for all of eternity, all right? You don't even have to close your eyes. You can look at me right now. I'll look at you and you look at me, okay? Just say these words. Dear God, say that in your life. Dear God, as much as I know how, I invite Jesus Christ into my life. I don't understand it all, but I know I need you. And I want to get to know you. And I want to learn to trust you. And I want to know your purpose for my life. Why am I here? And what do you want to do with my life? And I'm saying, yes, Lord, that's my answer, even before you ask the question. Yes. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I want to give my life completely to you. In your name, I pray this. Now, if you prayed that prayer just now, the Bible says in the book of Romans, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, would God lie? No, God, God is incapable. People say, "What is there anything God can do? Yes, there's some things God can do. God cannot lie. And if he says, I will save you if you call on my name, did you call on his name? If you followed me in that prayer, you just called on his name. Then according to scripture, no matter what you feel, high, low, or whatever, You've been brought into the kingdom of God. You brought into the family of God. You're a child of God. You were always loved by him. You were created by him, but now you're in his family. You know what the first thing you need is family? You need to find a family home. You need to get a church. There are lots of good churches in your area. If you don't have one, well, call TBN or call, look up Saddleback. We'll help you find one in your area to, to find a place. And the number one thing you need as a new Christian is a family. They'll help you get all the other stuff in your life. But I will be praying for you. Matt and Lori, you guys will be praying for them. Absolutely. And this is the most important decision you've ever made. Now, let me just say this. Sometimes there's a little bit of delayed reaction. I remember when I said those words to my wife, I do, and I got married. And I remember I woke up the next morning after our wedding night, and I rolled over in bed and I looked at my wife, and I said to Kay, my new wife, 
So I said, you know, I don't feel very married. <laughs> She said, well, it doesn't matter whether you feel like it or not, Buster, you're married. Okay, you made a commitment. You are married. Okay, well, uh, it was about two weeks later. I was actually at the end of the honeymoon. I remember waking up one morning, and I rolled over in bed, and I looked at Kay laying there, and I go, I get this woman to be my wife for the rest of my life. And I, I got so excited about it, I got out of bed, they started jumping around, and I go, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. She goes, well, a little delayed reaction, but at least you got it. So the emotions can come now or they can come later. But when God comes into your life, he starts making changes. God bless you. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.